Hi, my name is Gretchen Klein and I teach eighth grade math. I'd like to start by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about me. So I grew up in Southern Washington, graduated from Washougal High School. I earned my degree in math education at Central Washington University. And this is my sixth year at WMS and my 14th year of teaching eighth grade math. I taught high school math for three years before moving to eighth grade. My primary goal is to ensure that your student is prepared for high school algebra next year. So the eighth grade standards that will be taught are transformations and angle relationships, linear equations and their graphs, solving complex single variable equations, functions and scatter plots, operations with exponents, and the Pythagorean theorem. As time allows, additional eighth grade math standards will be taught, and throughout the year, I plan to supplement with critical seventh grade standards that may have been missed or not completely understood due to the pandemic. I'll be using our illustrative math curriculum, self-created videos, instructional slides, and practice sets, and then a variety of supplemental materials uh, from online resources, such as Khan Academy. Uh, grading, your student will receive two grades at the end of the semester, one grade will represent their effort grade, and it is calculated using their daily assignment scores. This grade does not show up on Skyward throughout the semester. It will only be visible at the end of each semester on your student's report card. So that might be a little confusing when you see a bunch of grades, but the overall grade isn't changing. And that's because the second grade represents your student's academic grade, and it's calculated using their quiz scores or their test scores. This academic grade is the grade that you see on Skyward. So the grade will only change after a test or a test retake. If you're curious how their effort grade is going, I grade every assignment out of 10 points. So 10, 9, 8, those are all great scores. Even a 7 is fine. It shows that you're working to learn. Anything below a 7, your student might want to think about redoing the assignment or asking for help. I'll check in with them too but that gives you an idea of what their effort grade is looking like. Below is a screenshot of my Schoology page. Uh, the current week's folder will be at the top of the page. Students will have access to the folders with past notes and assignments to access as they need it. And an activity menu with optional review and enrichment activities will also be available. So at the top of this, you can see assignments for this week. And when students click on that, they can see the different assignments that are being given this week. There's another folder for the notes for this week. I'll be putting in a blank set of notes for students to complete. And if a student's absent later in the week, I'll upload a completed set of notes so that they have access to learning. Um, then at the end of each week, I'll translate those items into the appropriate unit folder. So our first unit is transformations. So everything will go into either notes for transformations or assignments for transformations. And then at the bottom, you can see there's an activity menu that's available for students who want to do some extra review or some enrichment. All work will be submitted through Schoology except tests. Students have options for their submitted work. They can work on paper and take a picture and submit it through Schoology. So not everybody likes to work on the computer. Some people prefer paper. That's fine with me. Um, you can work on the document using Kami within the Schoology assignment. So that would be a way to do the assignment on your computer using Kami. You can re record a video of your work on paper or make an audio recording of your verbal responses within Schoology as long as it fits the assignment. Some things are hard to do that with. Uh, you might be wondering about tests. Tests are given about every two weeks depending on the concepts. A practice quiz is provided for every test. Students can take the practice quiz as many times as they need to to get ready for their test. And practice quizzes are counted as an assignment, so they're not a test. It's practice to get them ready for their test. One retake is provided for every test. So if a student earns a score they don't like, they can do a retake. And if they earn a lower score on the retake than on their original test, I'll keep the higher score. So it's a low risk activity. It's worth a shot to try to get a higher grade, but definitely study first. 
The more your student is able to be present and participate, the more they will learn. Attending class and participating in classroom discussions and activities will truly be your student's best opportunity to learn. I'd love for them to take advantage of that. If your student is not able to attend, Schoology will be the most complete resource for missed learning and materials. I'll provide a copy of completed notes as well as helpful videos and assignments. A missed day from school is a bummer, but at least they have access to the material. So how can you help your student? Encourage them to do the following. Persevere. Learning takes work and time. They're getting old enough that a lot of the concepts they're learning take time to process. So encourage them to persevere. Ask for help. Email me, FaceTime a friend who understands the concepts, search the internet for diff different tutorial videos, ask me questions in class. Take a break. Students who struggle with a concept the day it's introduced often discover that the next day it isn't so confusing. So your brain may need a break to process things subconsciously. Definitely stay positive. You're more open to new ideas with a positive mindset. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me at the address provided. I look forward to a great year helping your student to prepare for a successful high school math experience. Thank you.